Oh, yeah. Time to risk some real money. Oh, it's sounding good. People love money. I love a challenge trick involving a bit of change where you're giving away some money. You say, hey, let's try something here. Uh, you're going to like this trick, I'll tell you right now. Uh, just as a side note here. Super easy, super magical. You will get screams with this trick. Now, I know it's quite a claim. Quite a claim. Every uh, magician in the world is, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this, this thing I do with a bit of lint and a half a banana peel blows people's ma. I know, I get it, but this you'll see. You'll see this, you can actually get screams with it. It's easy to do, it's cool. Okay, a little money trick. Little wager trick, great for coffee shop, great for bar, great for restaurant, whatever it is. As soon as people hear the big change, the big money, that's when they get excited. What do I got here? I got two bucks, I got a loony. He's a loony, and I got a dime. It's three bucks, 10 cents. You say, hey, if I can't find the card you're merely thinking of, you get it all. All You don't even have to split it among your friends, okay? So here we go. And you say, wait a second, though. You're thinking, wait a second. Is it still there? They can still hear it. You can even look. Someone's really nervous or they don't trust you. Say, go ahead. They can hold the chain between their two hands like this. You say, look, I'm not going to have you reach in and take out a card. I'm not going to do that, okay? Because maybe I could do some sort of sleight of hand, some sort of manipulation. Let's keep it real simple. I'm just going to go through here. Cut off some cards. You say stop whenever you want. And they say stop at some point. When they do, nothing suspicious. And they really can say stop wherever they want. You're just cutting off. You square up the cards. Super fair. Say, I'm not even going to now. You said stop. And like I said, I don't even want you to remove the card from the deck. Okay? You lean forward. You give them the tiniest little peek. They see a card. You got your mind. The number, the suit, the whole thing. Cut it back inside. Couldn't be more fair. Okay? Holding on to the change. You're thinking of a card from the back. Concentrate on it. Watch this. I'm just going to cut the cards right here to one card. If I have not just cut to the card you're thinking of, all that money, yours, fella. Boom. They say no. You say, not surprised. I was just warming up. Give me a chance here. I'm gonna cut to your card right now. Like I said, this time for all the money, they go not quite. Go, wait a second. So there's no way, that money's yours. If I can amaze you, can I get the money back? And they say, sure. I say, well, cause look, when you see the card you're thinking of, you let me know, fella. And here's the crazy thing. You go through every card in the pack. The spectator can go through every card in the pack and they will not find their card. It's literally gone. It's that magical. Then you turn to the person and say, is the chain still there or did that vanish like the card too? They've been holding from the very beginning. They shake, the chain's still there. You go very slowly. Let's make sure that the entire money is there. They turn it over, they spill it out, but insanely, impossibly, inside the cup they've been holding from the very beginning, only one card. And Lord help us, it is their card. So that's the Scream Fest. You do that, they've been holding from the beginning, they find the card inside with the coins, goodbye, okay? I'm going to teach you the secrets to this. I'm going to teach you how that force that you think you might be familiar with is actually a foolproof force. Works every time. You're going to learn the secret to that. You're going to learn the secret to the vanishing card. Uh, we're going to talk about the structure of the whole thing a little bit and why it works so well and why it's one of these tricks I try to feature on my channel, usually at least you know one every week or darn close, uh, one every week uh, that is about the magic and about the psychology, not about the sometimes difficult sleight of hand that really isn't worth the practice and not about tricks that are way too complicated okay also gonna we're gonna jump in here in just a second also gonna announce the winners uh we're gonna announce the winners of last week's video uh or giveaway which was spellbound last week you guys you had to leave a comment down below in the last video saying what's one of your favorite words in any language and why okay i got 12 winners here and the question of the week let me ask you the question of the week right now uh this week i'm going to be giving away um, and as always, go to sankeymagic.com. That is my website. That is my, my store. Over 100 products. Check it out. Maybe I'll leave a link somewhere. Who knows? Uh, but this week, I'm going to give you a chance to win one of 12 Second Sight 
was thinking that was maybe too white in the camera. I don't know, too, too blinding with the light in here. I don't know. Uh, second Sight. Now, Second Sight is a mentalism prediction trick involving tattoos. Tattoos are quite popular. People like the tattoos. Oh, I don't have one there. Or one, oh, no, I do have one uh, there, there, there. People like tattoos, they're kind of interesting. Probably there's a good chance you might have a tattoo. So it's a really relevant thing. This is a prediction trick involving tattoo images uh, and your chance to win, just leave a comment down below. And the comment, the question I want to answer this week for your chance to win is, if you could make this card appear with magic, if you had real magic, anywhere in the world, the spectator freely chooses a card, it vanishes from the pack, they can go through, it's not there, and it reappears anywhere in the world, just this card. Where would you have it appear? What do you think would be crazy, unforgettable, magical? Where would you make the playing card reappear with real magic powers if you had them? Okay? Leave a comment down below for your chance to win. Uh, okay, let's jump into this. Oh, oh, oh. So, this uses a gimmick created many, 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 many years ago. Been kicking around for a long time. A lot of magicians have messed around with it. With this gimmick, you have the power to make any card vanish in the pack. It's incredible, and the spectator can go through, it's gone. It's an amazing gimmick. My question to you is if you didn't have real magic powers like you and I, I definitely don't, and I think you don't, I don't know. I figure if you did have real magic powers, you probably wouldn't keep listening to this video. Jay would be gone, remember the day then. Um, what's the best way to use this gimmick? And I've played with this. I've had the selected card appear in a quadrillion different places. When I used to do restaurant work and trade show work, I've had it appear in, in pamphlets. I've had it appear uh, in envelopes and wallets and, and this and that. I used to really like the idea of appearing in the card case. I thought that was really magical too. Then I realized that the probably for mortals like us, the most amazing place to have that card reappear is in the spectator's hand. I thought, well, how do I do that? I can do a transposition, have the card, the joker they've been holding from the beginning changed into their card. Very cool trick, very cool. And I've got great reactions with that. I mean, I've explored and messed around with so much of this stuff uh, over decades, because I have no life, you know that. Uh, but I thought, where can I have it reappear that's in their hand that, that maybe doesn't involve a transposition, this and that. And so when I realized I could have it reappear in their hands, in a place they don't think, because as soon as you take out an envelope, put it on the table, say, go ahead, pick a card, gonna, and as soon as it vanishes, everyone turns and looks at the envelope, which is great, okay? It's great, but I've never had anybody, when we see it's not there, I have never had anybody, uh, and sometimes I've done this uh, with paper cups like this, but I've also done it in people's homes, private parties, in a, a mug from their kitchen, whatever, okay? And nobody ever thinks it's gonna appear in here. It's, it's not a natural jump, because here, they're busy making sure nothing gets out. Nothing gets out. Forget about anything getting in. They're watching the change. So the psychology of this, the fact that the card reappears in their own hands while they're guarding the money, but they never get ahead on you. That's what makes this trick so strong. And it took me a long time to figure it out. I mean, you know, they say, uh, what is it? You know, it takes forever to get to the simple. And it really does. I mean, you'd think my parents must have ended up having had sex a thousand billion times to get to something this simple. This truly simple, right? Anyway, having said all that, okay, so what's the gimmick? Here is the gimmick right here. Look at that. I mean, it's boom. It's wonderful. Look, it just looks like this one, but a different identity. But actually, this is two cards. This is two playing cards. And they are glued together at one end, okay? So let me show you this. Ooh, it's so good. Got a glue stick. Put a little glue on the face of the top card down to about that far, about my finger pressed it down, line these up really cleanly, okay? Put them, a lot of pressure on there. Maybe a heavy book, maybe get a very strong man and on his shoulders, he's got a whole lot of watermelon. They're actually watermelon people. Little arms, little legs, they don't talk. They're watermelons and he's holding them all. Maybe, maybe he's humming a song. He's trying to get the watermelon people to fall asleep while he's helping me with my little gimmick. You put some pressure on it. Then what I have here is a little dot, pencil dot, pen dot, maybe a little bit of whatever you want there. Okay, uh, it could be, what's that? Uh, it could be squid, squid ink, squid ink, okay? And that marks the end, that's unglued. I've got a four of spades, okay, and a queen of diamonds, whatever. And of course, you wanna make sure you have no duplicate queen of diamonds in here, right? Okay, so the queen of diamonds is glued. Glued on one end, pencil dot on the other, so I know the open end, right? Then I've got my duplicate, duplicate four of spades. It is here, and this is kind of a nice thing. Since it's tucked up in there, Notice, you can very freely spill this out and give a nice flash in here. Now, you got to be careful, but if it's directly opposite them, 
they can't see anything. Okay, I love that part. I love how freely I can handle this thing. The sound supports there's nothing in there. The visual supports there's obviously clearly nothing in the cup and you are good to go. One piece of advice, if you're gonna, and I uh, found this out the hard way, if you're gonna be using a paper cup in a coffee shop, you wanna make sure it's not a big bright window behind you. I don't know if you can see it in here, hopefully you couldn't, but if you got a bright window behind you going, yeah, the shadow of the card can sometimes be seen. And that's not magic, okay? So that's your setup there. You got the duplicate here. You got the gimmick card on top here. Now I wanna show you that force that never ever misses and a bit of the psychology, okay? Do I have my gimmick on top? I do, okay. Gimmick is on top. The dot is away from me, so I know that's the open end. We're here. Now, let's jump in, though. We did the question. The winners is Spellbound. You guys won Spellbound. It's a cool mentalism trick where you can actually predict a playing card, or and it actually involves shaking, where people uh, shake some Scrabble pieces, and you're able to predict uh, which is going to be the Scrabble piece they choose. Use it. Very cool gimmicks. Easy to do. Uh, winners of the Spellbound tricks. Here they are. That guy, oh, and if I say your name right now, first, congratulations, nicely done. And second is contact my team. Send an email to my team at contact at sankeymagic.com. Give them your real name and your YouTube name if they're both, if they're different. If they're the same, well, if they're both the YouTube name, they need your real name is what I'm saying for the shipping address, okay? So if you're in the witness protection program, come on. I'm sure that crazy killer is no longer looking for you. And he certainly doesn't work at Sankey Magic. So give us your real name, your shipping address. Uh, and they will send you the prize for Spellbound, the gimmicks, okay? So here are the 12 winners. That guy who does magic, literally a guy, that's his name, one word, that guy who does magic, YouTube guy, you won. Alex Ivan Juice, Jos, J-O-O-S, Joey Kirkland, Lothar Schuler, Lothar Schuler, no one's safe. Gary Dreyfus, Mark Wilkie Fatchen, Wilkie Fatchen, Wilkie Fatchen. He used the Wilkie Fatchen technique to uh, knock the gun out of the assailant's hand. Uh, Ryan Murray, CT Films, CT Films. And we all know that CT stands, CT Films. And CT, I think, st stands for Cat Town. Nothing but cats in town. That's all of our movies there. Will Masovic, Will Masovic, Thuggy Boy. That's his name. You are a little bit of, of a thuggy boy. That accent, man, I wish. Just really, really, really sorry about that. Thuggy boy, B-O-I. Isaac Whale, W-A-L-E. And finally, Joshua Hubble. Joshua Hubble. He's the inventor of that famous, you know, people look up in the sky with it, that, the tube of paper, the Hubble tube. Yeah, anyway. Uh, so you guys all won. Congratulations. Okay, let's jump in this. So, got the card set up. Got some crazy amount of money there. You could have a lot less or a lot more. Maybe not a lot less, I don't know. You got the setup of the card here like this, and here's what you do. You say, hey, let's risk a little money. Big money. Let me guess if people can guess. That's the kind of thing I would do improv. And, you know, so if someone hits it, I'm a miracle worker, and it happens. Or they guess whatever they guess and go, you know, you're very optimistic here. It's only like three bucks and ten cents. Okay. Here we go. You don't, you're looking at me like you don't trust me, like I'm going to make the money. Look, just to be sure here, go ahead, hand on top, hand on bottom. Okay, so you're, as if you're responding to them. The best performances seem like the performer constantly responding. You weren't planning on doing that, but here. Well, you want me to do that? Okay. So you're responding, but the whole thing's, of course, a terrible sham. But, uh, very unsuccessful furniture store. Terrible sham. You're here. All right. Uh, how's the force? Uh, you, I'm not going to have you reach inside and grab a card. I want you to think of a card and have you just peek at it real casual, okay? So I'm going to cut about a quarter, maybe even less, okay? A fifth, is that less? I think it is at all. Of the cards into my right hand and put these on top. But I want the majority of them on top. Now, you will find if you say, start, say to someone, I'm going to start going through the cards you say now whenever you want. As long as you don't start, you say now whenever you want. Too late. You want to be starting. I'm going to start dropping cards on the table. You say now whenever you want. Around there, you want your first packet done. You do another one. Almost everybody will stop on the third packet. Okay? So I lift up everything above it and they call stop. If they don't, then the vast majority of the remaining will do on the next one. All I do is take about half of this. Notice they can call stop there and they don't know if it's this one or this one. They call stop here, I go to this one. If they call stop here, then I go to this one. You're not saying which of the two. So this is what makes it whether you're doing one, two, three and they call stop or they have to do one more, then they call stop, you got that one. Now, if you do four and they still haven't called stop, then you do the classic, 
I don't know if you understand. The idea was for me to go through. And, and at that point, all I've done is picked up Sam down to this small packet here with the gimmick still on top here. At that point, I look at the make some joke about it, no, and all I do is grab these, put it on top here. You could either give the deck a false cut at that point to keep it casual, or literally just grab these, put it on top, and say, I don't know if you understood. Cut the pack, keep a pinky break, and riffle force. And as we know, going through and they call stop, and I cut there, now the riffle force is 100%. So you can go from this, which really gives them some free choice. The other tip too, of course, um, is to always be watching their lips. No joke. It sounds like a silly, weird thing I'd say, but no. You go through like this, you go, so you just say when, whenever you want, and you'll you'll see people, as soon as their mouth starts to move, then you just cut to the, to the cards, okay? Or like I said, if they don't say stop here, you do one more, and then they will say stop, okay? And you can be the top or the bottom, whatever. All right, so you're forcing it down to whatever packet, okay? Let's say, uh, for the sake, they do it uh, one, two, and they do it on three. You go, great, I'm not gonna have to remove the card. You lean forward, I'm gonna give you a little peek, and this is, my thumb is pressing down on the back end where it's glued, okay? And I'm just lifting this up, giving them a chance to see it, and boom, just like that. So this is incredible gimmick, where the card is visible for a second, now virtually gone, right? Take all these, drop them on top, so that card in there, now you're in a crazy situation. They just saw a card. They're convinced that 100% free choice. The card is essentially not in the deck anymore and it's between the hands. Crazy. Try not to wet yourself with excitement, okay? Because nobody wants to hire the great Stano for repeat gig. There's something about repeating and Stano that nobody wants, okay? Nobody wants that. Not in this town, okay? Now... At this point, you can snap your fingers, wave your hand, you can pretend that I think, is that your card? No, is that your card? No, wait a second. There's, there's so many different things you can do with this at this point, but the way I like to do it is they're holding it here. I'm gonna try to cut to your card. If they do, keep it on the money, the money, give it a shake. Is the money still there? The money's still there. Boom, thank you so much. Was that, it, it, that wasn't the card. Okay, well, hold on. Give me one more chance, okay? There's three bucks, 10 cents. Let's assume I lost uh, some of it. Let's say 10 cents. You still got three bucks. Uh, false cut or cut the cards there. No, okay. What you, you know, like this? How about there? Like this? No, and you do it a few times. Now, I go through, or, and I want to emphasize this, don't get caught thinking like a magician. Can't tell you how many times I've hand, handed the pack to somebody and say, do me a favor, just start uh, turning over the cards and dropping them on the table. Let's see when it comes up. And nobody ever feels, I barely feel, when the double glued card comes by. Almost nobody ever feels it, okay? So it's an incredible way you can do it in your hands, you can do it, what I find is you do individuals for about three quarters of the deck or half, then start grabbing them. You don't want to ruin the momentum of the thing and spread, fan them right out like this, okay? Like this, it's not there, really it's not there, that's crazy. Don't rush, please, I always say this on the channel. This, forget about this for a second, this is freaking crazy. The card vanished, your sleeves are up. Hell, when you showed up the gig, you weren't even dressed and you really smelled like booze. That's a disappointment for the booker, who's actually, this is your third and last gig, just so you know. It's a crazy vanish. The, the card is gone. It's amazing. Now, don't sit so long and people start going, hey, I wonder where the card is. Maybe, hey, Joey Lu Lubin, Lubin, Joey Lubin, is it in the cup? Whatever. Is it in the cup? Is it upsetting? It can be used, understood in lots of ways. But you go through there like this, and then you come back over here, and they say, you know what you're thinking? You're thinking he made the card vanish. Maybe he made some coins vanish. Go ahead, dump them out. Now, when I, if it's only one or two people, I will let the person look inside and then they, they freak out. They see a card. Notice I got the card back out. You could have it face out, but then you have a bit of drama gone, right? They look inside. Oh my God, there's the four. Whereas if it's face down and they go, oh my God, there's a card and people go, oh, now you get to build on it. Is it the card? Okay. Um, but if I'm dealing for a lot, I've done this kind of trick for 10 or 15 people at a private party. And in that situation, I want everybody, as I always say, so they'll look inside, let them go, oh my God, or I'll take it from them and go, no, the coins. And then I very fair will show. And I want everybody to see. Now, the fact that you dumped this stuff out earlier and the fact that he's been holding it, everybody's assuming that, of course, Joe looked in the cup. I mean, he, he, he had his hands on it. So nobody ever thinks that was there from the beginning. So don't get caught thinking like a magician. It just appeared there, which is crazy, which is crazy. Notice, forget about it vanishing here. If you even did a trick where it was the coins in the cup, okay, and a card appeared in there, that would be great. This is two incredible tricks coming together. Boom, like this. Boom, it is there like that. Super, super strong. Lots of magic. Last thing to remind you, my friends, is don't forget 
I want you to have a chance to win Second Sight. As always, you can check it out at um, mechanicalterrordevices.com. No, it's Sankey Magic. SankeyMagic.com. Check it out there, Second Sight, for your chance to win. Leave a comment down below. If you can make this card, you can make this playing card appear anywhere in the world. You got real magic powers, okay? You can make it appear anywhere in the world, okay? Where, <coughs> where would you make it appear? It's like a little heart there. Look at that. Oh. Watch this. Great, great. That was really clever. Bad transfer followed by destroying the freaking evidence.